Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and we're back again with another Spirit Island video. Today, we're going to be playing a little bit of Sharp Fangs against Russia. Russia is a really odd adversary in that the most common way to beat it is to play spirits that kind of do nothing at the start of the game, and you just scale up and scale up and scale up uh, until finally you can just go so big and over the top you just crush them, um, trying to gain advantages without gaining fear. But they also have the weakest starting position of all the adversaries in the game. So you could also flip that over and you could instead play so insanely aggressive that they can never get a foothold and you just snowball the game. Because they have pretty much a generic uh, start. All they add is a single explorer. And then since we're playing Sharp Fangs, it adds an extra beast, which actually makes our position even better because... That's more damage for us. So our goal here is to have a wildly aggressive game and don't even let Russia get their feet off the ground. Let's see how we do. All right, starting off with the Sands. Okay. So... Uh, one common opening with this spirit is to go for the extra three energy and then reclaim immediately thereafter. That would allow you to play two near the jungle and teeth gleam in order to hit your left innate multiple turns in a row. And the problem with that line is that would give us two damage here. So we'd be able to hit the five, you know, kick this guy out, add a presence here, uh, teeth gleam here. Uh, you know, we could add a presence, re remove the presence for the extra beast. That gives us two damage in this land, which against Russia is insufficient. Um, we could, uh, also use two near the jungle here in order to full clear it, but that's a lot of work. And the whole point of two near the jungle is to gain, like, a tempo advantage, right? Since we know that we're looking at either jungles, wetlands, or mountains... If we plant a presence here in B4, we'll be able to deny something going into next turn. And uh, if we were to invest all of our actions here into the three, then we don't gain any advantage going into turn two. So therefore, I think that reclaim idea, the early reclaim, is not going to work for us and we want to gain a power card. And if we wind up just giving up the three, then so be it. Something like Gold's Allure is alluring uh, <laughs> in order for us to gather things in. But I do think just going for two near the jungle, Teeth Gleam for the ranging hunt on turn one is a great idea. Uh, and just lets us play ahead and, you know, we'll just eat the blight, whatever. Um, that being said, uh, I mean, Gold's Allure is a card. <laughs> of all the cards in the game, it's certainly one of them. Something like Roiling Bog doesn't accomplish anything. Defend 2 does not get the job done. Similarly, Twilight Fog, the Strife, uh, does not get the job done. With both of these, you'd hope that it can solve the Explorer Town by itself. So we're looking at really doing like a Prowling Panthers versus a Gold's Allure. And I think we'll just take the Prowling Panthers. Being able to just kill a thing uh, is pretty good. And we'll kick you out over... If we kick it over here and then we get a wetlands, then we're kind of stuck with this two near the jungle. Like, what do we do with it at that point? So I think I'll go right here. Uh, jungles would probably be the best explore for us. We can two near the jungle this guy. We can ranging hunt over here, kick both our beasts into the six, and then start hammering down. Yeah, so this is going to be a big problem land right here, so that's what we're going to stick with. Okay, we get the mountains. Still planning on... Hmm, actually, let's think about that. Maybe we kick it up here and then we ranging hunt to get all our beasts over.
Yeah, with the point, with the with the goal of just blowing up this six, because as soon as we do that over the next two turns, um, we will then pocket the hole inside, and that would be a fantastic situation for us. Um, I am thinking about actually doing a reclaim though, in order to get that two near the jungle. Or not too near the jungle. No, exactly that card because we're looking at either a wetlands or a jungle. So one of these lands is going to get explored. And it's a zero cost card that does everything that we need. Ah, one turn too late on the sap. Um, a zero cost defend five as opposed to a one cost defend five. Uh, is a big deal when we're going up to only one energy for the turn. Yeah, looking at taking Blight, take Blight. Uh, and Entrap the Forces of Corruption is a card that allows us to get into these Blighted lands. So perhaps that's the take. We're planning on taking a little bit of Blight with no Blight removal lined up. And if we go too near the jungle, we can pair it with Teeth Gleam again uh, in order for us to uh, get that Ranging Hunt. That'll allow us to grow a bottom track. Um, or we can grow top track and then play something along the lines of like a Prowling Panthers. I think we might do that. So we'll play this two near the jungle. Now we can play like a Prowling Panthers, which allows us to keep our beast coming out, but with holding this Teeth Gleam from Darkness. So that way uh, we have the dual element card uh, for the next few turns and we have a lot more flexibility. Uh, especially once we pick up this next animal here, we can just start throwing down majors, which is pretty nice. Ooh, unfortunate. Oh, do we hit the water on that? Thank goodness. Uh, well, killing off all of this now instantly pockets us. Uh, so if we do get jungles, we just kind of get to run away with the game because this won't even explore. Oh, wow. And we get the event to save us right here. Yeah, uh, that works out pretty nice. We're 100% taking Blight now in the two um, and just giving ourselves the time to scale up. Thankfully, we get the triple explorer in the land that was going to ravage anyways, so this doesn't do anything to us. Um, we are not mad about that at all. The double wetlands? Oh my gosh. This game's so easy. <laughs> when, you, when you get the luck like this, uh, man. <laughs> well, all we have to do is solve one single land and we're just good for the rest of the game. Uh, Pyroclastic Flow, Destroy All Explorers Fast, is a card that I'm always very interested in in this matchup. Uh, Savage Transformation, best card in the game, as we know. Of course, it's actually legitimately playable here. Um, we have the moon animal cards with the free animal on the track. So if we go like Savage plus Teeth Gleam, that is genuinely playable. Um, and it's a card that we could play right now because we're going to gain two energy going up to three. That is uh, unironically very playable. And... Um... Oh my god, that is actually... And we, we can get rid of the two explorers right here. We have the... You know what? I keep on talking about how... About Savage Transformation. Just keep memeing on it. I'm going to play the card. Uh, and then you haters can uh, can keep hating. <laughs> no one's ever given me hate about this card, by the way. For the record, I'm not a hater. Uh, 
Uh, one turn too early to push the beast in. We don't even need to worry about pushing the beast in, um, because Savage Transformation will drop beasts into the two, so we will be able to get stuff in there anyways. Uh, because of the um, escalations, we're probably just going to put everything into the four. Um, I will push this out to the sands. That way we have multiple terrain options. And if this is sands or jungle, of course we're going to have to gamble, but we can... Um, we can pretty much dodge it, so we don't get the immediate double ravage. Oh, that's unfortunate. We're going to go Blighted. Well, we can't win everything. Alright, that worked out pretty well. Do I want to go here? I mean, I don't really care about keeping my presence alive. I like to kill my own presence off anyways, and it gives me better options in case of Blight Cascades. Hmm. I think I'll just keep my presence alive. I think I'll be okay. I can move presence around and deny Cascades. Okay, we can sacrifice you, remove you. Uh, all we're trying to do is kill the city and get the earliest possible Terra Level 2 win. We might even be able to get a Terra Level 2 win before we hit this bomb. That would That's really the dream. That's Our goal is to win right at this point in the fear deck. So, um, ooh, mountains. Okay. That is actually probably just really good for us, right? Because I could drop, like, explorers out here and then double transform um, in here. That double blight means that we can't get in with our ranging hunt, though. Hmm... Yeah, all we have to do is kill this city. The city provides two fear, and we only need one single fear on top of that in order for us to uh, solve this land. Unfortunately, we don't seem to have any fast solution uh, to, to this triple explorer. So I'm going to... Gain a miner. There's some pretty decent hits for us, I think. And we did not get them. Song of Sanctity is a card. It's not going to do anything for us. Because uh, we're going to be blighted all around. So we do need to draft into like a legitimate solution here. Reign of Blood is almost the opposite of what we want. Because we don't want too much fear. I think we just take this Ellie Boon, and then we cry a little bit. It's unfortunate, right? Because we'd want to use this in Trap to pull the Blight out, and then we could get in there with our Ranging Hump. But because of this Double Blight here, and it's going to Ravage... Oh, it's going to Ravage a ton, huh? Yeah, we need to target this land within Trap, so that way it doesn't Cascade. So otherwise, we're just taking enough blight to just lose the game on the spot. So we go here. And I guess we go here. That gives us the Frenzied Assault. Which is almost enough to win the game for us, but not quite. Yeah, no, that's fine, actually. Yeah, because we want to go here. Let's bring this beast in. Um, no, let's go bring this beast in. Bring this presence in. Bring this blight in. Fortunately, we can't do anything here. But we can... Uh, we don't need to bring that beast in. 
will kick you out. Going here and here. Okay, if we get like a one damage per beast, we just win on the spot, which is very nice to know that we just have that accessed or accessible in our back pocket. Uh, we did not get it. And yeah, we'll just destroy this present here because it was going to die anyways. No! Not adjacent to five. Very unfortunate. Okay. What is the play here? I don't think we use this Frenzied Assault. I don't think it gets anything done for us. Uh, we need to pick up a major that will kill a single city fast. That's all we have to do. That is not quite what we need. Rapid Wings of Sunlight is also not going to get us there. Mm, with this Vigor, do we have any Tahan movement? No. But we could draft into something. So I'm going to take Vigor. Just forget Prowling Panthers. And then we'll gain a Miner. Hmm. <clears throat> okay. So if we do the strong and constant currents, we can move our presence. We can go beast here, because we already have the two animals, right? So we always have that. So we can go beast here, presence here, strong and constant currents, move two to Han over here, kill off the city with the vigor, and that is a GG. Fascinating little way of winning. You know, we got ourselves like right up to the edge. Uh, just a very unfortunate circumstance here. But because we were able to play so aggressive, we got all these free actions, right? Because like we just didn't do anything in this number seven the whole game. We killed off that initial explorer here. Um, and then... It was pocketed and we just don't have to do anything. Similarly with the six, we just don't have to do anything. And so, <clears throat> yeah, we had that unfortunate event that, you know, the game would have been so much easier otherwise, but, you know, we had other good events for us that really balanced it out. So you can't get too mad. And that is basically the earliest you can possibly get a Terra level 2 victory. Only one excess fear produced from that explorer. Um, but that is one way to approach the Russia matchup. So uh, Lure's coming out tomorrow on the app, and I'm certainly going to do a piece that covers it, but it's going to be a completely opposite playstyle where you have this slow, controlled buildup as opposed to Fangs where you just put your head down and you YOLO and you just blitz them before they can really start to ramp up. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have a glorious day.